The Commander Access thing just had a massive update, and you might have missed it. Love it, hate it? The Commander X16 is one of the frontrunners among today's 8-bit retro computing projects. All the way up there with the likes of the Mega 65 or the ZX Spectrum Next. And just a few days ago at VCF Southwest, David Murray aka the 8-bit guy and Kevin Williams aka Texelat gave an hour-long presentation to address the community on the latest updates to the Commander X16 project. To say that presentation was jam-packed with information would be appropriate if not an understatement. However, because it's an hour-long video with an underwhelming thumbnail posted on a channel with less than 2,000 subscribers, not a lot of people picked it up thanks to the almighty YouTube algorithm. So I watched the presentation in its entirety for three times to distill it down into a short summary so that you don't have to go and watch it. However, if you do want to, I'll put a link in the description below. So, without further ado, here's what you missed about the big Commander X16 update. To kick things off, we have the MIDI card. And to be honest with you, the MIDI card is pretty impressive. Like, listen to this clip. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, this is being played from an 8-bit computer. When I first heard this, I thought it was cheating by playing an MP3 file on a cell phone or something. On top of that, the Commander X16 can now play MIDI files using its onboard sound system, the YM2151. However, the sound isn't that great. It is very similar to what you would hear on a computer from the 90s. Next up is everyone's favorite, games. And there are quite a few of them. For arcade style games, we have Warlock's Dungeon, which is a gauntlet clone. If you have seen Gauntlet, you have pretty much seen the entire game. And we also have Minor Rescue, which is a clone of a game called Hero. Personally, I'm not very familiar with that game, other than I have played the first stage on Atari 800, but it seems quite fun. And it also have a nice graphic bump on the X16. Our next in line is Scumbletron, which is Again, a clone of an arcade game called Robotron 2084. But this one comes with a nice quality of life upgrade in the form of mouse controlled input. Now you can use the gamepad to control your direction while using a mouse to shoot at the robots. Up next is a game called X16 Maze, which is original. That's good. And it is quite an interesting little puzzle game, and I like the concept. The game is based around a slippery platform, I would call it, and you are kind of this character that slips around. And the goal is to paint every pixel or every block uh, in the same color. Basically, you have to traverse every block on the map. Personally, I love this concept and I think this is a nice little game to have on the X16. However, I couldn't help but think that it does not show off the full hardware potential of the X16. And of course, we have Planet X16 and Pesky Robots. Well, I don't think they need any more introduction. If you haven't seen those games, watch AB Guy's video. One interesting thing to mention is that the Petsky robot now uses the Amiga graphics, so it looks better on the X16, basically. And later in the Q&A section, they also demonstrated a port of the Infocom Z machine, which is a virtual machine that's specifically designed to run Infocom games. And that essentially made the X16 instantly capable of running all Infocom games. And finally, someone has written a spreadsheet program for the X16. 
However, it does not get demoed pretty well on the stage because David, the AB guy, does not know how to use it. After the games, we have, and I quote, Steve Jobs, there's, there's one more thing. Moment of this presentation, which goes to the network card, or serial card, or Wi-Fi card, or ESP card, or whatever you would like to call it. It is basically an ESP32 based module that will allow the Commander X16 to connect to Wi-Fi. For now, there is essentially only one program written for it, which is called ROM term. Ironically, not in ROM. It's just planned to be put in ROM, so it's called ROM term. And it's pretty much what you expect, a terminal program. Its feature includes support for CBM graphics, NC commands, and of course, ASCII text. After the presentation, we had a 30-minute Q&A section. I won't go through all of the questions because a lot of those are just about the general architecture and design of the X16. And I think most people would know that. I have created a summarization of all questions and posted on my Patreon. So if you want those, you can go over to Patreon and check it out. In this video, I will go through all the questions that I think are more important. And first of all, we have Pricing and availability. I'm going to do a lot of quoting here. According to Kevin Williams, Texelect, we have less than a dozen left. Last time I checked, Texelect's website, Commander X16, is still listed as in stock. They do confirm that they have another batch of 250 boards arriving, but those won't arrive in a few months. But just in case the X16 is out of stock when this video goes live, I have found a lesser known project that's compatible with the X16 and it's called the Other X. However, this project has its own quirks because it comes in a kit form and you have to assemble it yourself. It does come cheaper at $250. However, you do need to have your own tools, soldering iron, solder, and quite some experience in soldering. I have contacted the seller of Other X and got confirmation that the Other X comes with some customer support. So, if you are really stuck, you can ask for help. On the add-on card side, the network card has, and I quote again, it's just about out of them. If you order your card now, it will be ready in probably less than a week at this point. So there's not a huge backlog, but order quickly if you want one. Next question is, does the emulator emulate the sound? And the answer is it does emulate the PSG and the Yamaha sound chip. For now, there's no MIDI support on the emulator. However, what is confirmed is that in the latest release, the release 47 Roswell of the emulator, they added the support for, wait for it, the 65C816, the 16-bit version of the 6502 chip. I know a lot of people want that in the Commander X16, and now you have it. Someone also mentioned the 65802 chip, which is a version of the 65816 that is pin compatible with the 65C02. That would be the ideal CPU for the Commander X16. However, the AB guy confirmed that they have contacted WDC and the reply they get is that the 65C802 chip has been discontinued years ago and there's no plan to restart the manufacturing of that chip. Moving along, what program was used to create the graphical assets for the Planet X16? And the answer is a Python script written to convert a large bitmap file into a format that's compatible with the Vera. David, the AB guy, mentions a tile editor is being developed for the X16 on the X16. However, he also says that the development of that tile editor has been stalled. He does not mention what reason, just it's stalled. Something I want to mention here is that there is 
a tile slash sprite editor being developed on the PC that works with the X16 format. And that sprite editor is called the Aku Sprite Editor and it's developed by GB Akumas. I would say it exists, but I don't know, it feels very hard to use to me. Either that or I'm just not very good at it. Moving along, someone asked about some sort of company partnership that they are apparently in in their last update. However, the AB guy said that they had a big investor, but they kind of fell out with that investor so that the investor is no longer investing. But they do mention something interesting. I'll play it for you here. But we, we do, you know, obviously want to go forward with a, a um, cheaper unit, but um, it's just we've been so busy with network cards and terminals and MIDI cards and stuff like that. It's just kind of slowed us down a little bit on uh, on getting towards the, the second gen. But uh, it's still very much like the long term focus for us. Now, I don't want to overdose everyone in Hokkien. However, you can kind of interpret that as there is a second generation unit being developed, but it is stored by the development of the serial network card and the MIDI card. Now that both of those cards are finished, so we may see the development of the second generation unit soon. Again, I know it's a bit of a stretch, take it with a grain of salt or however you like. At this point, I just want to say it is good to hear that they are still officially committed to the second gen unit. Yeah. Next up, we have an interesting question. Is there any plan to build a USB card? for the Commander X16? Unfortunately, the answer is no. And the reason they gave is that a USB controller would probably exceed the performance of an 8-bit machine. Now, I don't think so, because there is a USB card for the IBM PC, and we all know how <laughs> David Abigail likes to talk about the Commander X16 is faster than an IBM PC. So if an IBM PC has a USB card, then I think there is a possibility that the Commander X16 would have a USB card too. On the other hand, Kevin at TechSelect mentions that there is an I2C header on the motherboard of the X16. So if anyone wants to build an I2C peripheral, like an RGB light strip or something for the X16, it's possible. And next, we have a few questions about operating systems and emulators. There is a version of the Command X16 that worked with Geos, according to the dev team. However, that's an older version of the firmware and now they have changed the zero page memory map and it kind of no longer works. But there is a sort of Midnight Commander, Norton Commander style file manager written for the X16 and it's pretty functional. The dev team also mentions that there are a few Unix-like shells being developed for the X16 and that there are discussions for a in-house all GUI operating system that's designed specifically to take advantage of the hardware of the Commander X16. And finally, someone asked, is there a plan for the X16 to include a VIC-20-like spiral-bound manual? And the answer is a resounding yes. It turns out that there are multiple people working on their version of the Commander X16 manual, including, most famously, Perifractic. 
However, it turns out to be very time consuming and none of the Spiderbound manual project have reached a point that is ready for mass production. Remember, this is not an exhaustive list of everything that's demonstrated in that video. It's not an exhaustive list of all the questions asked. It's just the ones I think that are important. Again, if you want a full list of summary for all the questions, you can go over to my Patreon. I've got the link in the description below. For one or two dollars a month, you can now join and support this channel. But that's it. For this video, I'm Andy, and I will see you in the next one.